Digital transformation, the key to modern dentistry. For Dr. Ingo Barr is a, not just the title of his lecture, but a lived reality. As a dentist in private practice, he already switched to a digital workflow nine years ago, so I think it's safe to say that he's a pioneer in his field. He will now give an overview on 3D intraoral scanning, will then demonstrate how it works in patient treatment, and will then transfer that file into Dentamai Connect, that's DMG's cloud-based software for the digital dental workflow. Yeah, I must admit that we have recorded the lecture, as Dr. Bar Esel is currently on site at the IDS. Um, however, we will be talking to him after his lecture, and I think he's already waiting on site at the DMD booth for a short interview. Uh, but don't forget to ask your questions. Um, we will uh, then answer them together with Dr. Bar Esel after his lecture. For now, enjoy the next presentation. Hello and welcome to my lecture about digital transformation as a key element in modern dentistry at the IDS 2021 in Cologne. My name is Dr. Ingo Barisel. I'm a GP working in Kattelsburg, a little city near Nuremberg with about 10,000 people living here. So. Um, we do intraoral scans now since 2012. We changed from analog to digital dentistry. And I love the work I'm doing in digital dentistry. As you see on the right side, we are working so much with different scanners, with different digital workflows. Because I want to tell everybody in my lecture from my practice, what is working, how it's working, where are the differences, what can we improve in digital dentistry. And we made about nearly over 4,000 uh, cases now, mainly restorative treatments. We're making many splints. We're using our scanners for aligner therapy and we're using digital workflows in our orthodontic department. So. The question is, you're all experienced in analog dentistry, perhaps even in digital dentistry. But the question is, why should everybody go digital? What is better in digital dentistry? Is it worth to change all the workflows from analog to digital? Or it, is it just the hype about digital dentistry? And I can tell you, no. There is no hype. I always say to the beginning of every one of my lectures, intraoral scanning made me a better dentist. Digital workflows made me a better dentist. And why? Because mainly of two reasons. First of all, I see things that big on a screen. I see what I'm doing. And there is a nice study from the University of Munich by Professor Edelhoff and Professor Goethe. And that study says the quality of your preparation increases significant by using intraoral scanners. And why? For the same reason. You see things that big on a screen, better than you saw something ever before. But the second reason is you can improve your scan. You have a better outcome while using scanners. And why? Because you can change things partially. Like in this example, the scanner is shown you that there is not enough space for your restoration material. So in analog industry, you have to start from the beginning. You have to correct it at the patient's mouth and do the, s the same impression again. With digital workflows, you correct it in the patient's mouth, you mark just the part of it, the part where you did the correction, on your screen 
and then you rescan it. And no matter if it's like in this example, less space, or if there's something wrong at your margin line, or some blood run inside, or some gingiva collapsed, or whatever reason, you can improve your scan just in little pieces. And this makes digital dentistry so helpful to everybody of us, because we have a better result at the end when we press on sand and we send it to the dental technicians. And we made a little research together with my lab, with Florian Schmidt from the lab Stroh and Scheuerflug in Ansbach, here in Germany, and we made a research about two and a half thousand digital scanned cases compared to analog cases in between 2012 to 2016, so with the former generation of intraoral scanners. And we looked at the returns due to a bad fitting. And what was the result? In analog dentistry, with analog impressions, we had a return quote from about 3.5 to 4%. Returns to the lab due to a bad fitting. With digital dentistry, with digital impressions, we had a return from about 0.5% due to a bad fitting. So, and here you can save, first of all, money. Because the most expensive thing in our office is our time. So if we have to spend less time on doing things again and again and again, you save money. And you save money to the lab. Because the lab has to do everything again and again and again if something is not fitting. But the most important things are our patients. Think about our patients. Patients don't like impression. They don't like impressions either analog or digital. They don't like injections. They don't like to remove the temp. They don't like retraction aids. So you have more satisfied patients because you can be sure that everything you incorporate to the patient's mouth is fitting. So you save money and you have more satisfied patients while using digital technology. You have less chair time. And I want to show you a little video. On the left side, one of my assistants will take an impression with Alginet. But the same patient, without any assistance, I'm doing an intraoral scan on the right side. And in the middle, you see the real-time scanning window, how fast scanning is. Look at me on the right side when I'm scanning. I don't look to the patient's mouth. And this is something you have to learn when you start scanning. Because you just will be fast in scanning when you can move your hand not relating to your eyes. So you don't have to look at the patient's mouth, you have to look at the scanner. And this, this is something you have to train. And there is for sure a learning curve. But after 50 scans, you will be very fast in scanning. And as you see, I'm ready in between 3 minutes and 13 seconds. She will be ready in 6 minutes and 31 seconds. So I'm twice as fast with digital impressions than with an analog impression. And we have the same result at the end, an upper, a lower, and a bite. So nobody on this planet can tell me intraoral scanning is not fast, it takes too long. No, it's the opposite. You're always faster with scanning than with analog technologies, and so you have less chair time. You save, again, money because you have less chair time and more patient comfort. So the question is, how can iOS be used? Intraoral scanners can be used for restorative dentistry. They can use, be used for the diagnostic. They can be used for tooth movements. And they can be used for the TMJ therapy, about what we're talking later uh, in relation to DMG. 
So these are at the moment many of the scanner which are on the market and they are all a little bit different. They are all have some features um, which the other one has not. So we can talk about hours and hours about the differences between all those scanners. But that is not the point. The point is what is possible today with intraoral scanners. And we know that the accuracy of intraoral scanning is that high that I can tell you, and this is proven by so many studies worldwide, that just everything is possible. There's no need to go analog anymore. I want to show you some examples. First of all, you see here an easy case, just two upper incisors. You see a colored scan. You have a monochrome scan. This is necessary for setting the margin line because it's so helpful to have color and monochrome scans to set the perfect margin line, uh, especially when it's deep subgingival preparation. This makes life easier to you. And you have a real photo, as you see on the right side, which you can even send to the lab to make it the lab easier to set the margin line. So you see everything in detail after intraoral scan. We do big restorative work, everything digital, like you see here with bridges and crowns in both arches. We do full arch work, even digital. Yes, it's working. It's really working because Everybody was in doubt years ago. Yeah, you, ca you can use it for single teeth, but can you really use it for full arch works? For full arch workflows? Yes, you can do it for full arch cases. And this is even be proven by, for example, a little study from Albert Mehl from the University of Zurich. He was showing that nearly every intraoral scanner on the market in 2018 has an accuracy regarding the full arch uh, under 50 microns. And that is absolutely uh, curious and, and, and accurate for an intraoral scanner. So yes, you can use them for everything. One thing you have to think about when you see a case like this, most of the intraoral centers want you to scan the patient, and this is one of the differences between the scanners. They want you to scan the patient in one workflow. So you scan the occlusal side, you scan the buccal side, and afterwards you scan the lingual side, just in one flow. That means you have to, uh, to uh, put out all the retraction aids, you have to remove all the retraction aids before, like in analog dentistry, and when you think about a case like this, this is not that easy to control all those teeth um, regarding saliva, regarding bleeding, regarding gil collapsing gingiva. So um, this makes life not that easy to you because afterwards, if there's any problem, you have to cut out some uh, areas and rescan them. And there are scanners on the market where you have the possibility just to scan one tooth, remove one retraction aid, scan it, scan the next, uh, remove the next retraction aid, scan it, and so on. So these are the differences between the scanner, or this is one of the big differences, and you, as somebody who is thinking about going digital, about thinking about uh, buying a scanner, um, have to think about what is important important to you, what are the features I want to have, and this is one of the features and one of the big differences between the scanners. We do tabletops like this, on lace tabletops, uh, however you call it, uh, with intraoral scanners, and even with a change of the bite dimension. So not a problem at all with intraoral scanners. And here's something I want to show you, because this is something where your workflow will be much easier with scanning patients. Because, look at this little video. 
we have a patient and we scanned the situation before removing all the old crowns. So with this scan, we were saving the bite situation. And then we prepped the patient and scanned him. And the scanner is able to fix the situation, the new situation, into the old situation. So you keep your bite situation. And if this is possible, and this is possible with internal scanners, you can make some steps less than you had to do before, like taking the bite and so on. So you can uh, give the new restoration faster to your patient than you were able before. So you can keep the bite just by scanning the situation before. And this is a great tool. We even do removable dentures digitally. So look at those pictures, how nice you see the surface of the gums. And yes, we're not just doing implants. We even do removable dentures for people who have not that much money and cannot afford implants. We do it digitally, but one thing is really important for your lab workflow afterwards. You have to do a digital lab workflow. You cannot print the model and work analog like you used to. You have to be able to do a digital workflow with designing and printing the situation. Chair side production is something what is coming more and more and more popular. With internal scanners, you now have the option, doesn't matter which scanner you're using, to do chair side dentistry digital. What do you need? You need a scanner, you need a designing software, and you need some milling machines. You don't have to go chair side, but if you want to, you can do it. And with the new software options, it's really easy to design and mill restorative crowns and bridges or inlays. And especially when we're talking about onlays and inlays, we know that the gold standard now is to make a solution very, very fast because the wound of the dentin should not be uh, open that long with a temp. You should solve it as fast as you can because the dentin wound is healing better when you place your restoration fast into the patient's mouth in between one or two hours. So if you want to, you can do chest dentistry, but you don't have to. You can even work lab side. It's your choice. And you can even scan implants. First of all, the most important question when we're talking about implant, digital implant dentistry, is there a digital workflow for my implant system? And not is the scanner able to scan implants? That's the wrong question. Every scanner is able to scan implants. But you have to have a digital workflow to your implant system. And this is either offered by the company who produces the implants or by a third-party company which offers a digital workflow to your implant system. But with most of the implant systems which are on the market now, there is a digital workflow available. And what is the solution? The solution is a scan body, a scan post. Um, they look uh, different, uh, doesn't uh, matter where which company you buy. You have to talk to your lab, you have to have a certified workflow with your lab, the lab has to have a library for your uh, scan body system and then you can work perfectly while using scan bodies. That looks like this. You screw them into your implant, you scan the surface as you're used to with, uh, with teeth and that's it. Quite easy. Much more comfortable to the patient than analog impression of implants. You all know this. But there's another uh, advantage. It's not just that you can transfer the situation, the position of the implant 
to the dental lab. You have the first advantage is the Munich implant concept. That means you can scan the situation, and this is a scan from about five seconds while you were placing the implant. And then it's up to you if you want to do just a chair side milling or a lab side milling because uh, you will reopen it in three months. You can produce an individual healing cap. And what is the advantage of these healing caps? If you remember, when you buy a healing cap from your implant company, it's always round like a circle. But I've never, never in my life seen, um, especially a molar, which is round like a circle. The emergence profile is not round like a circle. And this is your advantage with individual healing caps. You can make your own profile, which is referring to the patient. So you leave this for two weeks, and afterwards you get a perfect result of your emergence profile. And now the second advantage is that you cannot just scan the situation with your scan posts. You can even scan those areas of the emergence profile. And you see, this is the position of the implants transferred by the scan posts. And this is the emergence profile transferred by another scan from a few seconds. So again, this makes me a better dentist because I can transfer this information quite easy to my dental lab. How else can I use an iOS? I can use it for the diagnostic. And this is a, again a difference between the scanners. Not every scanner is able to do this. And what is diagnostic? It's carious diagnostic. So, for example, this scanner is able to show you with every scan if there are some lesions in between the approximal regions. And no matter if you do a scan for restorative or for uh, splints, you always get the additional information if there are some lesions in between the teeth. And I love this tool. I use it every day in my clinic because it's so helpful and you see things so early. But you just not can just not look at the carious lesions. You can even monitor the patients. What does it mean? You can identify tooth wear tooth movement and recessions on the scan. If you compare a scan from, for example, one year ago and today, and then you can show the patients the problems, like moving teeth or recessions which uh, are getting bigger. And there are different kinds of software on the different scanners, but many of them are already able to do something like this. And you can show it to the patient, you can talk to the patient, and as we always say, seeing is believing. So if you can explain something to the patient and he is seeing it with his own eyes, he will understand and accept your therapy. But you can use this interval scanner even for tooth movement. Tooth movement means orthodontics for sure, but at the moment aligned therapy is increasing significant in our offices. People want to have straightened teeth, they, they want to smile with nice teeth. And this is possible with aligners. So what is the uh, the advantage of aligner therapy. You have a better fitting of aligners after an intraoral scan. And why? Because of this area with analog impressions, you always have those cutouts in the approximal region. 
which you don't have when you're scanning because your interall scanner is getting deeper in between these approximal contacts. So you have a more efficient and a faster treatment because the aligner is grabbing around the teeth better than he's doing it with analog impressions. And you have another advantage with digital uh, workflows. You can show the patient before doing um, the aligner therapy how the result will look like. So again, different option on different scanners, but uh, the same uh, result. You can show the patient what he gets. And again, seeing is believing. If the patient can see how he looks like afterwards, he will for sure say, okay, doctor, let's do this. I want to have this. And this is not possible with analog therapy. So now let's talk about TMJ therapy. Let's talk about splints. I'm educated um, by Professor Axel Buhmann, who is uh, a great person talking about uh, TMJ problems over years. And he teached me how to set the correct uh, bite situation at which patient for which situation. And I'm doing this most of the time with uh, a wax like this, with a hard wax called GC bite compound. So um, this is nothing what we can talk about. Um, which possession position uh, we want to have today, we're talking about how is it possible to get from this position that we fixed as the position in which the aligner, uh, sorry, not the aligner, in which the splint should be uh, onto a designing software. So we fixed the situation, we scanned the upper, we scanned the lower, and then we scanned the bite, including the bite material. And as you see on the left side, you see the bite material is still in place and the scanner was um, taking the bite with the upper and the lower. And afterwards, the scanner itself removed this material. You don't have to do this. The scanner is doing this automatically. And now you can transfer this bite situation that you want to have into the new software, what we're talking about now, or to your dental lab, however you like it. If you want to, you can take a few uh, data from TNJ measuring system and add them into the designing of your splint as you like and as you, uh, your concept is working. So and now we have collected all the data and now we're talking about the great product of DMG, the Dentamile Connect software, because really the future of digital workflow with this software has begun. It is a cloud solution. So uh, for this product, the Dentamile Connect software, DMG won the German Innovation Award in 2020 because the idea behind this system is so great. What does it mean? It's a cloud-based dental software for an easy and validated workflow. Cloud-based means no data is on your computer. Validated workflow means that the components that you need for printing, for washing, and uh, for curing are talking to each other and know which product is used and how this product, how this material should be worked on with every single machine. So you do a CAT design, you have connectivity to the printer. The printers, the washing machine and the curing machine uh, are communicating to each other and so you have an absolute exact outcome of your product. The future is in the cloud. Yes, that's true. You see, 
you have those components. You have the software where which you're designing, you have the printer, you have the washing tool and the curing tool. And all those tools have um, access to the cloud. You have a validated workflow from the material with the designing and the printing. And as I told you, and uh, after my lecture, we have a more detailed lecture about how that works and what is important and how the software works. Um, it's e that important that you know, for 3D printing, you not just need a printer, you need a printer, a cleaning machine and a curing machine, and all those machines have to know which material is used and which component has to do uh, which work. So, let's have a little look at the Dentamalka Noct software. First of all, you have the indications what you want to do. We want to do a bite splint. You can choose the material um, from which you want to print this splint. You design it. This is the result of the design. You send it to the printer and the printer is uh, doing his work and printing this splint. A, a little look at the software, what you can do. This is just um, for setting the occlusal plane. You can, if you want to or if you have to, you can uh, change the bite situation as you like to. Y the system is showing you the undercuts of uh, the arch and you are able even to change the direction of the insertion. Then you can choose uh, the design of your splint. If you have it longer, shorter, that's your choice. You can design it yourself. Then you can correct, you can smooth it, whatever you like to. You can make it thicker or thinner. Then again, check the occlusal surface. The system is showing you where you have a hard bite or a soft bite. It's your choice how you want to design um, your splint. You get a suggestion by the system, but it's your choice that you can change it like you want to. So this is the result at the end and then you can send it, send it to the printer and it will be printed like this. So I want to show a little video how printing works. I love to see that because usually uh, this is nothing you can see at printers. It's dipping in a little bit, then it's cured, getting out, getting in, and so on. And after about an hour, you get a nice splint afterwards. You still see the supports on. You can remove the supports afterwards and polish your splint and incorporate to the patient. If you want to, you can do this chair side. So after about one and a half hour, you can place it to the patient's mouth. But you n just can print splints. You even can print models. You just have to change the material and then you can print models like this. Afterwards, again, like with the splints, you have to wash them. And look at this, the system is communicating. This is the setting for the model material. So you start it and the model will be washed. Afterwards, if it's washed, it has to be cured. And again, the system is communicating to each other. Again, you have the settings for models. You cure it in a vacuum and then at the end you have a really perfect model with a perfect accuracy. So this is the future. It's the future of the Dentamile Connect cloud software. At the moment you can print models, you can print splints, you can print flexible splints, but in the future there will be much more possible and don't forget, it's a cloud solution and cloud solutions are the future. 
So I have just one conclusion for you. I can just say it. Just do it. It's time to go digital with all the advantages I was showing you. And because I can explain you so much in a presentation, we now want to show it to you on a real patient while scanning the patient and in addition afterwards designing a splint. So thank you and let's go to the patient. So welcome back um, and as I promised we will now make a real scan on a real patient from the upper, the lower, we are taking the bite and then we have an STL data which we can import to the Dentamal Connect software. So first of all, we start with scanning the lower arch. Okay, we place the scanner and then we scan first of all occlusal surface, we rotate to the lingual surface and then afterwards we scan the buccal surface. So now you have to look at the scanner if there are some holes in the data, if there's something white but this all looks very very good so we rescan a little bit and that's it ready with the lower we switch to the upper so now we scan the upper and again same thing we scan the occlusal surface, we rotate to the palatal surface and then we rotate to the buccal surface. So, so that's it nearly. Just look if there are some holes. We are closing the holes. Give some additional information and that's it. So now we have to scan the bite. This is the bite splint which we produced al already before scanning. The patient closes his mouth like the bite splint is produced. So and we now scan from three sides. We start at the right side and as you see the scanner is placing the upper and the lower scan correctly to each other on the left side and an additional scan at the incisors and that's it. This is scanning and this is so fast that you're not able to do it that fast with an analog workflow. So now you have all the data collected, you now can produce your STL file, the scanner is producing the STL file and this file can now be used to design the splint in the Dentamal Connect software. Quite easy, quite fast. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Baisel. I can see you're already waiting on site in Cologne at the DMG booth. Good to see you again. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Everything perfect. Um, you hear perhaps uh, there's really uh, a little bit of party behind me, but um, it was a really, really great and nice day today. Yeah, that's good to hear. So you are currently on site at IDS and you have already been able to gain a personal impression over the last two days. What's the atmosphere like on site and uh, which new trends in the industry have you been able to identify so far? 
So, for sure, as we all expected, it's not that much traffic here on IDS, which we knew from uh, the last years. So, but I have to say, it's every day, it will, uh, it's a little bit more uh, people coming to the IDS. And the atmosphere is, is really great because you meet so many people and the people are really happy to meet each other, to get in contact. And this is really a, a great atmosphere here at IDS. Um, I talked to many uh, companies and they said, yes, there are less people for sure at the booth, but the people who are at the booth, um, they always have something some questions and they are interested so they just not want to collect pencils um, they really have questions they are interested in uh, some things so the quality as we call it of uh, the visitors is extremely high um, when i look at the ids and the trends it's for sure um, it's digital the trend is digital dentistry without any doubt. So everybody's trying to bring their workflows into digital. And what you, you hear when you talk uh, to the companies, they many of them try to connect to each other. So to make workflows smoother, if they cannot do it alone, they try a little bit to, to make some connections to really make digital workflows easier. One of the most impressive things is 3D printing. 3D printing is really one of the biggest topics here on IDS um, because as we know, it, it will be the future. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for that. Um, you already mentioned 3D printing. So in your opinion, what are the most important advantages of 3D printing compared to the conventional approach? So I think 3D printing has uh, some advantages. Um, now let's talk about what is a conventional approach. So um, either we are able now to now to mill some things, but milling um, is really expensive. The milling machines are expensive. The time for milling is expensive because when a machine is running with, with long milling jobs, it's expensive for us. Um, this is much, much easier and cheaper with 3D printing. And we'll talk a lot about waste, about rubbish, about things like this. So it's much more, um, from this point of view, yeah, easier to print because you don't have something uh, you have to throw away. When you cut something out of a blank, you have so much wasted material. Um, you don't have that with 3D printing. and um, the advantage of 3D printing, it's, it's easy, it's fast. I see a product which is nearly uh, ready. I don't have to do something uh, anymore. So um, 3D printing, especially on saving materials, is something what increases significant. Or think about models. You will never ever be able to mill models perfectly with, with, with removable uh, dies or whatever. So you have to print this. And in all of the consequence, we're not able to do everything chair side or everything without any impression. So we still need impressions. But when we need impressions, we have to print them and we cannot mill them or something else. So 3D printing is really an important factor here in IDS. Mm -hmm. And how do you estimate uh, the time savings of 3D printing compared to dental milling? So which work steps are no longer necessary? So you have really in, in, in some uh, kinds of work, you have many time savings. Um, you design something, you send it to the printer, that's it. You don't have uh, to change uh, some some uh, drilling materials. You don't have to change the blanks. Um, you don't have to, have to to wait because milling lasts for some things really long. Um, but especially again, when we think about models, um, this is something we cannot mill. We cannot mill models, and we need models. And mo printing model is really really easy at the moment. So. 
you create a model, you send it to the printer, press the button, and the machine is doing it. So other, afterwards, you take it out of it, you give it to the wash, you take it out of the wash, you give it to the cure, that's it. And especially when we, when we look at the printers uh, of DMG, this is really a controlled uh, workflow, a certified workflow, which relies to the material. And this is very, very important. Yeah, uh, thanks. I've got one last question for you, Dr. Baeza. Um, which advantages do you see in a cloud solution for a 3D printing software? Um, I think cloud solutions are the future to everything in digital dentistry. Because um, when you do interval scans, you have to save them anywhere. So this data, I want to always be able to get access to this data. So I want to save this all in a cloud where everywhere around the world I have access to this data. Um, the second point is when you talk about um, the, the cloud solution by designing, it's so extremely helpful to have it in a cloud because first of all, if I have it on my computer, it has to run, I have to do updates, I have to check if all the settings are correct. If I have it in a cloud, I don't care about that. I just log in and it's working. And if there are updates, you do it for me in the cloud. So I don't care about that. I don't have to do anything. If I log in, it's working. So I have to don't, don't care about so many things. So I can save my data anywhere in the cloud and get access from anywhere. And I have not the problem with uh, what we all know with, with programs running on my computer and suddenly they are not working. So I think cloud solution is absolute uh, the future. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, also, thanks a lot for sharing uh, your opinion with us and for being with us for this interview. Um, I wish you a good last two days at IDS. Uh, hope to talk to you soon, Dr. Baesel, and have a nice evening.